Hey, welcome back. It's uh, Joe here from Data Analytics Ireland. It is Tuesday, the 9th of June 2020. Great to have you back. Hope you're all keeping well and safe. Um, so today we're going to talk about regular expressions and there's two of them types, special sequences and meta characters. So let's get stuck in. So you're facing a scenario with a data set and you want to search for specific characters in the data set. So the usefulness of regular expressions is you don't have to go off and write long code. You can basically use the regular expressions, which very quickly is written to go and in, go into the code and find those specific characters you want because the system knows and recognizes them as um, special characters. And I recognize the fact that when you put them in your logic, this is what it's supposed to do. As a result, using, using any meta characters, um, if you are trying to actually search for them, and if they are actually appear as bad data in your data, you have to escape them. Um, and that is covered off, we'll see it down below as an example in eight, okay? But for the moment, let's just start. Uh, I'm going to go down to these now. Um, so essentially what we're trying to do here in number one is we're going to match a single pattern. So what we're trying to do is essentially say you have a value E in the the data that you're checking, which is here. And you want to say, go and look at that data. And if you find it and if there's a value before it, we'll just rerun this. If there's a value before it, basically return the value. So in this scenario, what we're basically saying is an e, there's two E's here and there's, a, there's two H's beside it. So what the meta character regular expression has done is basically said, yes, we found it. Um, it's in the data set and we're returning it. So down here, you'll see two H-E and a H-E. Now, what you can do is if we just return, if we just put in two dots, it's basically saying return, look in the actual data set, look for the two values before E, and if you find them, return it. So if we run this again, it now only returns T-H-E. And the reason for that is it has E here, obviously, and then there's your, your first and your second dot there represent the T and the H. The reason it doesn't do H and E is because there's nothing before the h so therefore it returns false and it doesn't return it in the output okay so that's a way of searching your data set um using a dot and basically defining exactly what you'd like to look for so if we move on um we are basically now to see start if you have a string and you want to find to see is a particular letter at the start of that string or character it could be anything you can basically again with the same um with the same uh, string here okay hello to the world and essentially what you do is you do the hat h which basically means is go and check is the hat h is that value h at the start of the string when you run this code it basically goes and checks here and says it's h start of the string and it is and it returns it so number two here in the output has returned a h okay so what you could do is we could change that to a d we know d's at the end so this should now number two should go empty okay so again it's not finding it at the start so it's just returning turning an empty kind of a list here all right so we'll just put that back to h for a second and do this and there's your h again all right so that's how you would check for the start of a string it's a particular value so number three we're going to match for zero or more occurrences of a pattern so what we want to basically see say is we want to search for h and see if there's any if there's a or more characters after it so essentially what we're basically saying here is go and look for h and actually is there any characters after it doesn't matter what the characters are it just wants to say yes h is found and there is the, there are characters after it. so that's what the a star means so in this scenario we've done it for h so h is there and h is there okay you can see it there and you could see it there 
so in this scenario it says yes both h has been found twice and and because there's characters after it it returns us in the output number three okay so if we did let's just have a look at w okay let's just rerun this yep and again in this scenario it because w is there and has characters after it it returns it returns output in the output as w uh, basically meaning there's one value w with characters after found in the string okay so we'll just put that back to h for a second so moving on number four okay um we basically want to match he and see if there's one or more patterns found so in number four we're basically trying to see is there is there a he and how many times does it occur in our data set in our string so you basically use the plus sign and what that does is it goes off and it tells the system hey go and look for he and if you find it return it and basically tell me what if it's there so in this scenario number four he has been returned twice because it's here and here um okay and on to number five what we're going to use is the question mark and it's basically the question mark it's basically saying check if a string has zero or more occurrence of a pattern if a current if the current occurs then return all the values either individual or full pattern so what it's essentially doing first of all is the first step in this is it's looking for he so if it finds he in this string it will return it if it finds h on its own or e on its own it will also return it okay so we are well i, I must clarify it's not h e only not h if it um so in this scenario it's run the string search it's basically said found he so it's re so we are number five he um has been returned and it's in the list there now it's also gone and said um oh e we need to check for e we can see e is there and we can see e is there it's also returned it there so it's either it's either he or the value e is returned in the output okay so moving on to number six so what we want to do here is we're checking to see is el e in the, the data set which it is and is there four occurrences of l after e so as we quite clearly see e is in there and there's one two three four occurrences of l in there as well so when we look at our output for number six it returns e and four l but if we change this it returns blank and the reason being is it's looking for four occurrences of l it's only found three therefore when it does its check it's basically saying there's only three not four so it returns blank empty okay so that's how you would check for a particular character and is there a pattern of characters after it next what we would do is um we're and this one's pretty straightforward we're just basically going to say i'm going to check for these two characters w and o and if you find them just return them in the output so it's number seven so in this scenario it is found O, O, W, and O, and where that comes from is there's your first O, there's your second O, there's your W, and there's your O. Pretty straightforward. It allows you to check, so you could put a H in there as well. Pattern seven. So there, it's found H twice because it appears there once and appears there twice. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward way of checking a, a string and seeing how many occurrences of it uh, appear and I put it onto a list. All right, so earlier on um, up above, I would have mentioned about um, escaping uh, meta characters. Okay, and here's our example of escaping meta characters. In this scenario, we have dollar, which is a meta character. In order to say legitimately dollar could appear in your data as bad data and as part of your data quality exercise you just want to remove it so in this scenario what we're going to do is we're going to escape it and how you escape a meta character is you put a backslash in and the idea is when you put the backslash in it literally tells the system a hey, recognize this as a literal actually a, a value 
we want to search for not as a meta character so in our scenario pattern eight we've actually the output is dollar so it's basically found the dollar within this data okay if we remove this okay see now it becomes blank empty there's nothing in there um it can't find it it doesn't recognize the dollar as a literal so we just need to put the backslash back in and there you are there's your dollar okay so that's a quick and easy way if you ever have you need to be careful meta characters if you're trying to search for some of these and you're in your day and you're doing a data quality exercise and for some reason not working check is it a meta character if it's a meta character then just be sure to escape the value so moving on number nine again what we wanted to do is we want to check our either or values so you could have two of the values in here or you could have one of the values in here you could have none actually so in this scenario we've basically said check for total and check for z now it says if both of them are found return both which they aren't because there's only one so that is returned but if we cha change this to two okay back to two so we know two and there is in the string it now number nine has gone to two and there there okay all right so that is a way of putting in a string search pattern search for a number of different items to see are uh, do they appear in your string so we could actually probably if we did this quickly just put in world as an example and this is number nine so world has appeared in there as well so you just you can add on to it and um, it's any way of um, if you want to just have a particular set of patterns you want to search for within your data and it will come back and tell you yes they're either there or they're not there so the final thing we want to do is we want to do grouping um, um what you want to do with grouping is you want to basically say look for these values for either a full match or a partial match so if we even do say look for the full match first of all so in this scenario we'll just rerun this code so we know there's a full match here of two and that so that works fine but there may be scenarios where these words are occurring but one of them matches and one of them kind of matches but doesn't exactly match so in that scenario if we took out the e here the e basically when we rerun this it basically goes off and does a string search is search against against this string but basically says hello i can find two but I can't find T-H-E, but the closest I can find it out is T-H. Okay, so that is a way of doing, using regular expressions to search for particular pieces of data in a data set. And basically, to be giving you examples of 10 there, there's a number of different ways you can achieve it. You can actually expand on this. These are very introductory ways to do it, and they can become a lot more complex the more you get into it especially if you're working in the machine learning data science area you're probably very familiar with this or if you want to get into it definitely recommend this is something you should learn more about it will make your life easier but it's also the complexity of it sometimes is quite difficult so i would start off obviously starting here which gives you a good introduction but then you'll have to go on and learn more so that's a, our introduction to meta characters in regular expressions we're now going to move on to special sequences right on to special sequences from meta characters these are another useful way of actually within your code putting in some um, very specific ways to actually check for pieces of data in your strings it's just a different way of looking at it from uh, meta characters and it's quite useful actually it's quite handy and probably good exercise after this is to compare the two in uh, your software to see the results they give you so let's quickly get into it so again we're going to use the uh, string hello to the world um, so in this first scenario we're going to use backslash a now what this is actually doing is it's looking for a hello but basically it's look literally looking for that value at the start of the string 
Um, if it's found, it obviously returns it. If it's not found, it just returns blank. So in this scenario, number 11, it's actually found it. Um, so that basically allows you to basically tell it to say, it, just look at the start, and uh, is it there? Uh, if it is there, return the value, obviously, in, in your output. So in number 11 here, we can see hello. Number 12 does exactly the same thing, but the difference between 12 and 11 is this it implicitly says to start at the position one within your string. So if you have, say you had an example, you had a space in your string or something like that, you potentially might not be able to get a return of value back. So here we are anyway, we've uh, run this code and the code output again gives us hello, um, uh, which is what we're expecting. So if we move on, uh, what we're looking to do next is actually look for a value in your string, but it's actually in the middle. So we can see here it's text is a bit different, by to the world. And what we're doing is backslash B, capital B, and it essentially is looking for HE in the middle of the string. So we have, you can see there it's R after T, HE. So that is number 13 there, returns HE. So that's how you would check for the middle of a string. Next one we want to do is number 14 is want to check for digits um, that are between zero and nine, obviously. It's very straightforward. You just your pattern, you do a backslash D and that will search for anything that's between zero and nine in your data and return it. So we do, we can see here there's two and eight are in our data. So it's actually a number 14 there. It's returned to an eight. Okay. So that's very quickly how you would do that. Moving on to number 15. Um, so we want to do is check if there's a white space in your data. So this is actually quite an important one. Sometimes you may be working with data and you need to remove any white spaces or certainly any trailing white spaces. You want to find out if there are any, if there's any white spaces in your data. So what this does is goes through the string, checks the white spaces and returns if there are. So in this scenario, we can see there are one, two, three, four. They just be, well, there are four white spaces in there. In hindsight, if you were to look at this, probably the first one is shouldn't be there. Um, but the purpose of this is just to show you how to find the white spaces. That's for another day's coding. So to find the white spaces, um, you would use backslash small s, um, lowercase s. And that's checking for the white spaces in the string. Okay. So there you can see the output of number 15, which is what we're on. It's one, two, three, four spaces that have been returned as the output for that. Moving on, number 16. Um, is obviously the opposite of this um, and what it's doing is it's checking for anything that's not a white space so again it's going to return hello to to the world h so we're at number 16 there's hello to to the world h is returned in the output and there's no white spaces in it in return in that output so that's how you would find everything bar white space okay number 17 um is we're going to check here is there any digits um sorry any digits um if there's any characters um or there's an underscore in the data so here we can see obviously it's quite clear you have uh numbers and letters uh, we also i've put in a, a an underscore here just to show for the purpose of this tutorial how you would find it so how you do that is you would do backslash w in this instance and what that will do is check for non-white spaces in the string so essentially give you back everything that's not a white space assuming it's a letter or a number or an underscore okay so that's number 17 so again there you can see it's given us all that all, all that back uh, including the underscore okay number 18 is see if there's no digit or character uh, in the uh, string okay so essentially what you're doing is you're checking for white spaces again but in this instance we go we can use capital W um, so up here we um, so we so we're basically checking for white spaces here in this string um, so there uh, if we use an 
uppercase W, it shows you we should return one, two, three white spaces. One, two, three. Oh, sorry, there's one at the front as well. Um, sorry, there's one at the front. So one, two, three, four. So that's number 18. And finally, um, if you want to check for a specific digit in the string, um, basically you use obviously the digit first backslash said and what I'll do is check f check to at the end of the string but it's only at the end so it won't be at the start so if we take if we change two to say eight no I know eight's there but just to show you if we rerun this it returns blank because it doesn't find eight at the end it's only got two so we just change that back to two Okay, and there's your two. So that's the end of our tutorial on um, special sequences. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this. So today we talked about special se sequences and we've also talked about um, our meta characters as well. Uh, this is important. Um, when looking at doing any string searches or looking to do any machine learning is something quite regularly used um, in regular expressions commonly used across a number of different languages so it's, if whether you're using python using javascript or php you'll come across this concept so today what you've learned is to basically understand on a very entry level how it works it is actually quite more complicated than this i I'm going to post up this video and also basically will have a blog post relating to this as well on the website so if you're watching this really appreciate you being on and spending time to go through what i've explained if you like it please subscribe hit the button hit the bell so you'll see future videos that come out and we'll see you soon take care bye